Hello my friends and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Five topics for this video and that is uh, the Americans and the Germans supposedly or reportedly allegedly they um, foiled a Russian attempt to assassinate um, the CEO of Rheinmetall. Uh, that's what they say. Why both Americans and the Germans uh, now Rheinmetall is uh, the biggest uh, German arms manufacturing company and um, arms Ukraine against the Russians and these guys are saying that the Russians tried to assassinate him again unsuccessfully because the Russians are not as good as CIA uh, um, at doing certain things and um, remember this guy from Rheinmetall wants to build factories in Ukraine so to do what to produce ammunition weapons to kill the invaders so the invaders the russians should not touch anything all right these guys are already involved so i said this many many times not many times but a few times before they will do it they will do it and much more now i don't know if that's the case that the russians really want it but they couldn't um i don't think that is uh, accurate but that's my assessment I don't think it's that hard to conduct some CIA operations or CIA-like operations, uh, you know, in Germany. What's going on here? All right, that's the first um, article, first topic. We're going to see the German Germany's um, reaction to that. Remember, Germany is under a certain kind of occupation, but together with the Allies, they. Uh, foil this Russian evil attempt and they will tell the Russians something like a warning the Germans who are not even independent or a sovereign country the next topic I have two articles coming from the Ukrainians and this is how these two media outlets Ukrainska Pravda report on the same issue the same um, the same piece of news and that is Maria Zakharova's statements and supposedly according to one article coming from Ukrainska Pravda Maria Zakharova slash Russia threatens to blow up two hydroelectric power plants in Ukraine but is this what she said or not well spoiler alert no business insider the next topic is Japan. Japan, like Germany, is a country under occupation still. Uh, political, military, military, and uh, I would say culture occupation. The mass media also um, works for the occupiers. And Japan, I would say, um, not I would say, this is my assessment of what's going on over here, they provoke a um, Jap Japanese destroyer provokes the Chinese Navy how it enters the territorial waters of China while China is conducting a live ammunition drill so what was that that was a provocation to be up so they can cry to their um, owners and say see we were attacked and then Japan threatens China and North Korea can you believe that so in the pack the weakest the person who's not having anything to say is provoking the other uh, gangs big shots what do you think will happen it's a provocation and then the last topic for today is Russia the Russian Defense Ministry calls the Pentagon and they they being the mass media in this case uh, it is from the hill they portray it in such a way as if russians blinked after nato summit i will interpret that in the way uh, i see it i don't think they blinked i think it was just a, a contact a response contact to pentagon uh, contact of which ini was initiated by the pentagon if you remember about uh, three weeks ago so this is a response but they make it they put it they frame it in such a way as if the russians 
are all scared because of the NATO summit. And see, it works if you stay united against the evil. That's the message. So let's start with CNN. Exclusive. United States and Germany foiled a Russian plot to assassinate CEO of arms manufacturer sending weapons to Ukraine. Why US and why not, let's say, France? Yeah, because Germany uh, is under this kind of occupation and because the United States of America, I think, owns the intelligence communication between the European countries. That's why it's go you're going to see the United States all over the place, like a unifier, like a common denominator. Wherever is a problem, you will hear United States' name over there to help because they that's what they do they always help like they help the Vietnamese the Koreans the Iraqis Afghanis the Libyans the Syrians the Serbs or the Albanians how you want to put it they are about to help Japan be flattened and South Korea but hey they would be far away <laughs> all right so let's see what these guys are saying US intelligence and I don't I give it credibility negative 3,529. So there's not 3,529 below the surface. They need to climb up, okay? So U.S. intelligence discovered earlier this year that the Russian government planned to assassinate the chief executive of a powerful German arms manufacturer that has been producing artillery shells and military vaccines, oh, I'm sorry, not that, uh, vehicles for Ukraine, according to five U.S and Western officials familiar with the episode. You know that if I would come here and I will tell you that I have the information from five um, familiar w officials familiar with the episode and I will say that's not true. It was actually the Americans who tried that and the Russians foiled the, the plot. Uh, why wouldn't I be trusted, believed? I think I have, I know I have, a higher credibility rating than uh, in this case the hill or any other reporter or as i call them nowadays system operatives they're not uh, or agents the so-called uh, you know uh, journalists and reporters the plot was one of a series of russian plans to assassinate defense industry executives plural across europe but they were all you know they couldn't do it they were just they need to go to uh, Washington DC and uh, actually go to uh, uh, not Washington DC and uh, go to CIA and uh, how do you call it uh, do some refresher cor courses on this matter how to do it better or maybe go to Israel because Mossad is pss, by far the best in the business Europe who were supporting Ukraine's war effort these sources said the plan to kill Armin Pepperger, a white-haired Goliath, nice guy, who has led the German manufacturing charge in support of Kiev, was the most mature, mature adult. All right, so that's the first one. Let's go to the next article. Ukrainska Pravda, US and Germany prevented Russia from assassinating Rheinmetall CEO media reports. So US intelligence revealed earlier this year, all right, that the Russian government, terrorist, organization already right now between you and I or let, let's put it in let's put it in in, a, in two look at it from two perspectives one the real world and the other one the matrix we are supposed to believe in let's say the real world in the real world if that guy provides weapons to kill my boys regardless of the reason why uh, my boys are involved in a fight with those guys that guy is a target that's the real world uh, now why was this guy uh, was he how do you call it was he under surveillance or under uh, under CIA surveillance was it under the German intelligence services surveillance you bet your ass he was that's the that's the real world so the Russians will if true, they could call it in the real world this and that, legitimate. Now, in the matrix that we are supposed to, obviously that's not fair, not fair. But the question is, well, if it's not fair from this direction, why is it fair from that direction? When you do it, it's a-okay, but when we do it, it's not okay. 
So that's the matrix that we're supposed to, no, no, we're good because the matrix says so. And when we, you know, these guys using the US military and intelligence to blow up that said terrorist or that this and that, um, that, that, that that's okay because he was ascribed, assigned, stamped as a bad dude by the guys who are good. But the, when the Russians who are bad do the same thing, or try to do the same thing, no, um, that's not, uh, not okay. Why? Because this guy is a good guy, and those guys, the Russians, are bad guys. Now, I'm not uh, promoting these kind of things, but uh, let's look at this, all right? I know this guy knew that that could happen. And let's say tomorrow it happens. And let's say it was the Americans. How would you know it was the Americans? You will never know that. As you will never know, who blew up the Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipelines. So they can say whatever they want. It was the Russians. It was whomever they find convenient for the moment to blame. I don't know if that happens, but I don't believe these guys squat. Let's see the brave Russian, not Russians, Germans approach and response to the, the Russians. Reuters. Germany says it won't be cowed by Russia after a reported plot to kill Rheinmetall CEO. So, advice for these uh, big, bold Germans that don't have their balls were snipped uh, on the 9th of uh, May, 1945. You first get independent, right? Get, kick out all the, uh, how do you call it, um, troops that are on your territory, occupiers, then you uh, rechange certain uh, laws, you change them, you rewrite your constitution, uh, freedom of speech be respected, um, and so on. And then we're talking, all right? And then you can say, we're gonna do this to you, Russia. You're gonna do what you're told, Germany, unfortunately. And um, for, unfortunately for the German people, they have weasels over there who are not working for their nations or nationals interests all right let's go to the next article or next topic ukrainska pravda please listen carefully to the title this is from the 12th of Feb uh, july 2024 from friday russia threatens to blow up dams in kiev and kaniv this is the title and in all this article we don't hear what zakarova said so they don't Zakharova, I know if she, if she writes in, uh, and obviously she types, right, or in, uh, in uh, Russian, you know, the Kyrillic alphabet, the Ukrainians write in the same one, so they understand exactly. So this is what you could, immediately, you could immediately, you know, say this is what you said, but in the first article, they don't. They say the Russians want to blow up. Well, that's not what she said. It says, Russia continues its attempts to undermine stability in Ukrainian society through its disinformation operation, trying to threaten Ukrainians with the possibility of new attacks. That's not what she said. I will tell you what she said. It says, uh, Zakharova claimed that Ukraine was preparing to destroy the dams of the Kiev hydroelectric power plants and the Kaniv water storage to blame Russia. All right. Well, so that's, I blame you for something that I say you might do it. Is there evidence? No, but I say that. Does that mean that I say I will blow it, as in the title? No. I'm just saying that you will do it. Or maybe I am doing it, but I'm trying to blame you, you know, false flag operation. Is that what it is? But still, the title is not, she threatens to blow up those things. She just says, no, no, those guys. So the title is very misleading. And I'm quoting. These statements are aimed at causing panic among Ukrainians by the Kremlin. Meanwhile, narratives about the need for peace, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking here, I don't find anything that is that where, she, where we have uh, um, uh, her statements in the first article. And obviously they uh, say that the Russian, then the Russian forces blew up the Kako, Kakovka hydropower plant, a hydroelectric power plant. I'm not convinced that the Russians did it. I don't know who did it. But just because the Ukrainians said the Russians did it, it doesn't mean that's what it is. But the problem is this is how the Western... Uh, so-called media, the operatives are reporting it. All right, so that's the first article. The next article, which gives us what she says, Ukrainska Pravda, so let's see, that one is from this, the first article, let's see what time. 
is from 1704 the time so that's what 5 p.m. 508 I'm sorry 508 1708 p.m. and we have the other one at 2046 the same day yesterday which is 846 p.m. 2046 this is the title Ukraine's Foreign Affairs Ministry responds to Russia's threats to blow you up dams in Kiev and Kaniv. Again, they keep the same narrative that they threaten to blow. Now let's, let's read what she said. And this is what she said. And I'm quoting. Ukraine is preparing to destroy the dams of Kiev hydroelectric power plant and the Kaniv reservoir. Ukraine's Foreign Affairs Ministry stressed that the aggressor state should be responsible for any criminal intentions regarding the dams. So, if the Ukrainians say the same thing, why would I uh, trust the Ukrainians? They say the Ukrainians come and say, hey, the Russians are preparing to blow up these dams, and tomorrow they are blown up. Does it mean that the Russians did it? Without evidence? Or just a statement? Or maybe you did it. So the same thing works for the Ukrainians as well. I'm not, I'm not saying, actually, not the Ukrainians, it's the guys in charge of Ukraine. So, it says, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ukraine categorically refutes Russia's absurd accusations that Ukrainian authorities allegedly plan to blow up the dams of Kiev hydro hydroelectric power plant, the Kaniv reservoir, or other infrastructure to be blamed, to then blame Russia for it. Well, that's the way it is, my friends. Blame. How are you going to find out? You're not going to find out. Why? Because they will both lie, or even if they tell the truth, are not trustworthy. Either of them. And if uh, the Western media tries to, media, the operatives try to get in and tell us, again, they um, have a lot of work to do and they will never be able to wash face and be clean, come clean. Now, let's see how Japan, um, I think, challenged, and I think this was a provocation. They wanted to be shot at, maybe blown up by the Chinese, and then a Gulf of Tonkin, a real Gulf of Tonkin, uh, should be blamed on the evil Chinese. But hey, where was the Japanese destroyer? Guess where? <laughs> Chinese uh, waters. This comes from um, Business Insider and it is from July 12, 2024. Japan is scrambling to explain why its naval destroyer pushed into Chinese waters, not violated, pushed into because when he raped her, he just pushed it in. He didn't... Okay. See the words? Waters where Beijing was conducting live fire drills near Taiwan. Near Taiwan. Uh, just look over the map and see where that is. Where Taiwan is and where Japan is and where China is. And then we're talking. Again, but the victims probably are the Japanese because they were pushed in. They pushed in. Japan is investigating one of its naval destroyers after it sailed into Chinese... It just sailed. <sighs> All right, let's get the sails up and let's go. <laughs> do you think those guys, the guy, the... the how do you call it? Um, uh, the Japanese captain in charge of that, do you think has a retard? In charge of a destroyer? sent on a mission by Taiwan, by China. Do you think that this is his first time on the... Timona? Do you think that it's his first time? No, it's not. He's got clear orders. I guarantee you that. Why? He's not a retard. Incompetence? Do you think that guy is incompetent on a destroyer? How many destroyers does Japan have? Like seven maybe? Five? Three? And you put a tard? I don't think so. Japan is investigating. Or Japan, Japanese media reported that the incident occurred on July 4th as China conducted live fire drills. That was a provocation. Here it is, shoot at us. And for how many minutes it violated? I want to let you know. Authorities say it might have been a mistake. <laughs> no, no, that's a captain of a destroyer. It's not a guy who drags a cart to go to the um, marketplace to sell, I don't know, cucumbers. It's not like that. Say it might have been a mistake, but are still questioning the warship's captain. <laughs> I don't think so. Japan's defense ministry is investigating officer of a naval destroyer that entered Chinese territorial waters for about 20 minutes on July 4th, according to local reports. Got that? So these guys are shooting over there with live ammunition, and this guy showed up, uh, pushed in. <laughs> All right, man. It says, per Kyoto News, the Suzuzuki approached the no-sail zone on July 4th and was told by Chinese vessels to turn the back 
but accelerated and continued deeper into Chinese territory. So he was told and he accelerated. So could that be a mistake? No, I didn't understand one another. I don't think so. I mean, he was told you are in, get the fuck out and you accelerate in. All right. The vessel was about 12 nautical miles from Zhangjiang coast. The outer, the outlet reported citing two anonymous officials. Zhangjiang, Zhangjiang is one of the mainland China's closest provinces to Taiwan. So the Suzu Tsuki departed Chinese waters about 20 minutes later and Kyodo news sources said they suspected the accident may have been caused by a procedural error. You're told you're in my thing, make the little calculation, you cart uh, dragger and then you're, oh yeah, I think we are in, let's go back. And that's a destroyer. If that's a destroyer captain, a captain of a destroyer, he should not be on that position. How did he get there? I know they don't have diversity hires in Japan. They still keep their nation intact. These guys are on them anyway. So let's see how Japan, Japan warns China and North Korea. <laughs> Can you imagine, man? Now, Associated Press. Japan, this is from yesterday, uh, from uh, July 12th, isn't that? Yeah. Japan warns on China, North Korea in annual defense report. Can you imagine? You're not independent and you warn on China and North Korea, which are independent. You are not independent in the first place. You have no balls like Germany. In its annual white... Wait, 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 wait. All right, it says, China and Russia's joint military activities around Japan are of grave concern. And North Korea poses a greater threat than ever, Tokyo's defense ministry said on Friday. So if they are entitled, and they are, to view Russia and China's who are by Japan, so the countries next to Japan, all right, right they're over there in the area, consider the, these guys' uh, drills, um, activities, military activities as great concern, grave concern, concern. How should Russia and China view, or North Korea view, the Americans, the Australians, the Brits, the, the, the Dutch, the French militaries right there, not by them, by thousands of miles from that region. How should they view it? I tell you how. This is how they put this in perspective. We are the good, they are the bad. Therefore, when they do something we do, it's bad because by definition they are bad. Got that? This is what, how we are supposed to think in the West. And the operatives, the media, the systems operatives are working day and night to give us in our head. In its annual white paper, well not black paper, <coughs> I told you the ministry outlined it stands on a range of issues from tensions around Taiwan to the intensifying rivalry rivalry between China and the United States. The United States, remember, is across the Pacific. China is there. So who's coming to whose neighborhood? Like in Europe. Who came to Russia? Was Russia coming towards NATO or NATO was coming towards Russia? Again, the good trying to prevent the bad to even try. Right? They should have done it earlier, right? Now there are the last, uh, the rust. Um, Article here, the topic, Russia reaches out to Pentagon for call after NATO summit. Um, well, why do you think they put it after NATO summit? It's because they want to portray it, these uh, truth spinners, that Russia got scared and had panicked and had to call. Therefore, keep doing what you're doing, more summits. But they could have said it this way, they, the title could have read this way. Russia reaches out to Pentagon for call after Jesus Christ's uh, resurrection. That happened before this call, or after Biden uh, called Zelensky Mr. President Putin, or after Biden called uh, Trump as his vice president. But no, they picked this specific. They made, there's no connection. They made the connection that that's why the Russians called because of the summit. Not because, I don't know, uh, I had a hard on a few days ago or something, or weeks ago. Or no, 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 no. That's unimportant. There's no connection. We give you what the connection is. And you have to believe it because you are a baboon, or so they think. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin on Friday spoke by phone with his Russian counterpart for a second time. Good job. In less than a month, 
and one day after the NATO summit wrapped up in Washington with a focus on countering Moscow, according to Pentagon. During a call with Russian Minister of Defense Andrei Belusov, which was initiated by Moscow, Austin emphasized the importance of maintaining lines of communication amid Russia never closed on them. Someone else closed the line of communication. And I guarantee you that uh, CIA and others, they have lines of communications open with Russia. If you think that they're not communicating, you're fooling yourself. Why? Why do you think these guys have a controlled war in Ukraine? And why did you, how that happens? Why do you think these guys say, well, I don't think it's good to send this over there. Why? Just because they're moral? No, because the Russians told them, if you do that, we're going to fuck you up. This is what we're going to do. How do they find it out? Direct communication, my friends. Do you think it's the media who sends these messages? Anyway, Austin led, uh, spoke, last spoke with Belusov on June 25th, about 2.5, two weeks and a half earlier. Prior to that, the Pentagon chief had not directly spoken with his Russian counterpart since March 2023. Because of you, as I said, communication between Washington and Moscow have almost entirely broken down since Kremlin forces invaded Ukraine in February 2022. No, they didn't break down. You decided not to talk to the guys anymore, and, right? Remember who wanted to talk about Ukraine? It was not you, it was the Russians. So the Russians tried to counter the unprovoked attack on Ukraine. But the other guy said, we're not talking to you anymore, do it. And the guy says, jawohl. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.